This is MTG Burgeoning, and in this video we are going to update and upgrade our Yarok the Desecrated EDH deck. Thank you for joining us for another installment of the Up and Up series. Today we are updating and upgrading Yarok the Desecrated. In the description of this video, you can also find a deck tech for Yarok. You can find the most up-to-date deck list and the video primer series. All right, we've got some cards going in. That means we got some cards coming out. And the first inclusion today, it is Displacer Kitten. Here we have a 2-2 Cat Beast for 3 and 1 blue mana, and whenever we cast a non-creature spell, we exile up to one target non-land permanent we control, then return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So what we're basically doing here is casting a non-creature spell, we're going to blank a non-land permanent, have that come into play, do its ETB triggering, and then have Yarok trigger it again, and if we're lucky, that won't be the only time it gets triggered. Displacer Kitten is going to make some big time noise in the 99 of this build. With this cat beast going into the deck, coming out is going to be Royal Elemental. Here we have a 3-2 Elemental with flying for three and three blue mana. Yeah, that three and three blue mana is not walking around mana when we're talking about casting this elemental. It has the landfall mechanic, of course, and whenever a land enters a battlefield under our control, we may gain control of target creature for as long as we control Royal Elemental. Well, here's the couple of drawbacks with Royal Elemental for anyone that knows that about playing with this in any kind of build, particularly a landfall build that might be built around Yarok. The mana is intensive at 6, so chances are when this bad boy is getting put onto the battlefield from our hand, if we're casting Royal Elemental for 6 mana, chances are we're not playing a land that turn to follow it up in order to take advantage of its landfall ability right away. Whether or not we need to have that on the battlefield as a blocker or a creature deterrent, 6 mana is a bit of an investment for a creature that's just posting stats that are 3-2 and flying. We need to get this into play with a bunch of cards in our hand that allow us to get lands onto our side of the battlefield in order to take the, in order to reap the greatest benefits of thieving our opponent's creatures. Which brings us to another detraction of playing with Royal Elemental aside from its robust mana value, it's, it's got a toughness of just two. That's shock treatment right there, folks. Not that shock is a, you know, a very popular card to play at the EDH table. What I'm saying is if you've got like three or four of your opponent's creatures, it only needs two points of direct damage for all those creatures to go bye-bye at a moment's notice. Royal Elemental and the investment on its mana, it's just not worth the return. I do believe pretty stringently that including that re that replacing Royal Elemental with Displacer Kitten, in addition to a 40% reduction on the mana cost. Actually, is it 40%? No, it's let's see. Yeah, it's saving a third of the mana that it takes to cast Royal Elemental for Displacer Kitten, that that cat beast is going to do a lot more for us than this elemental could. And I look forward to making sure that that swap is the right choice to make. And if it's not, well, then we'll find Yarok in another episode of the Up and Up series. All right, next card going in. The second card here, it is the Sword of Hearth and Home. Here we have an equipment for three generic mana with an equip cost of two. It gives equip creature plus two plus two with protection from green and protection from white. Let's not overlook the importance of those two types of protection, particularly protection from white. That's going to stop your swords to plowshares, that's going to stop your path to exile, and that's going to stop your generous gift. That's also going to prevent Beast Within from hitting our creature. Now, of course, each of those instants, Generous Gift and Beast Within, could take out Sword of Hearth and Home, but we'll make that swap every day of the week and twice on Friday Night Magic. So whenever Equip Creature is whenever Equip Creature deals combat damage to a player, we exile up to one target creature we own, and then we search our library for a basic land card. We put both of those cards onto the battlefield under our control, and then we shuffle. So all we have to do is to get the equipped creature to deal combat damage to a player. We get to exile one of our creatures. 
get that creature to come back into play, making its enter the battlefield trigger happen at least once. If Yarok is there, it happens twice. If any of the support cards are in there, well, then that's just going to get out of hand very, very quickly. Additionally, the land comes into play too, and we do have many, many different landfall abilities on the cards in this, in this build. So having both of those cards enter simultaneously... That could spell a lot of shenanigans that I can't wait to have Sword of Hearth and Home do in this type of build. So with that equipment going in, the card that it's going to replace is Hagra, I'm sorry, is Return to Hagra. Not Hagra Retreat, Return to Hagra. Here we have an enchantment with the landfall mechanic for two and a black mana, and whenever a land enters the battlefield under our control, we chose one of the following. Either a target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gains death touch until end of turn, or each opponent lost one life and we gained one life. Although the drain life mechanic is nice, particularly when paired with Yarok or any of the other ETB doublers or triplers or quadruplers, that are present in this build, it is a bit slow. And my thought here is for the same overall mana value of three, with Sword of Hearth and, Sword of Hearth and Home costing three generic, Retreat to Hagra costing two and a black, that we're going to be able to impact the battlefield more with what Sword of what, of what the Sword could do versus the landfall of what Retreat to Hagra can do. The plus one, plus zero, and Death Touch, that really isn't helping us very much. I mean, we have a lot of smaller creatures. Sure, we can send out we can send a buffed. 2-3 or 1-2 out into the combat and most likely get to swing in for one or two points, three points maybe of death touch damage, but wouldn't it be a bigger impact to see what sort of hearth and home can do with the blink and the land ability? Than to see what retreat to Hegra, I think we're going to enjoy the sword so much more than that enchantment. Of course, we'll find out when we start playtesting and game-playing this updated Yarok build. All right, we're up to card number three, and the next edition it is, oh yes, Virtue of Knowledge. Here we have an enchantment and an instant, both on one card. So let's talk about the instant part of this card first, because this does have the adventure mechanic. So we can cast Vantress Visions for one and a blue. It is an adventure. It is an instant. We can copy target activated or triggered ability we control, and we may choose new targets for the copy. If we so chose to cast this card for Vantress Visions, then we exile it to the adventure zone, where later in the turn we could, or later in the game, we could cast Virtue of knowledge, which is the enchantment portion of the card, which is if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. If I'm not mistaken, and I rarely am, that is almost word for word what Yarok does right down there. So an enchantment form, which let's face it, enchantments are much more difficult to remove from the battlefield than creatures, we're getting our general's ability on an enchantment. And that's not even factoring into that. That's not even factoring in that we could, as as the Vantress Visions part of this card, cast a triggered or activated ability without even having to have the enchantment in play. This card is going to pair with Yarok builds so beautifully well. With the Virtue of Knowledge going in, the card it's going to replace is Strionic Resonator. This was an artifact for two generic mana. We put it into play. We pay two generic mana, tap it, and then we can copy target's triggered ability we control, and we may choose new targets for the copy. Well, that's exactly what we get out of the... I'm not, sorry, I'm going to walk that back a second. The instant part of Virtue of Knowledge does that one better in that we could also trigger an activated ability if we need to at instant speed. Here we do lose the ability to continue tapping this to get that target triggered ability, but if we're paying two mana to cast it, and if we're paying two mana to activate it, it's only a matter of time till all of those all of that mana that we invested in to casting and activating Strionic Resonator is well beyond what we would have paid to cast Virtue of Knowledge, which does it for every triggered ability. Easy change there, folks. Virtue of Knowledge in, Strionic Resonator out, and it's not even a difficult decision to make. All right, we've got two cards left. The fourth card going in. This card is absolutely 
overpowered ridiculousness. I can't even talk enough about this card. Tributes to the World Tree. Three green mana. It's an enchantment. And whenever a creature enters the battlefield under our control, we draw a card. If its power is three or greater. Otherwise, we put two plus one plus one counters on it. So imagine having this card in play with Yarok, which is going to double this enter the battlefield trigger. And then if we have any of our other ETB doublers or triplers or quadruplers out there, our creatures are going to get so big. We are going to put so many cards into our hand. Tribute to the World Tree is an absolutely bonkers card. And it is going to fit into the 99 of this build better than peanut butter and jelly, baby. All right, with Tribute of the, to the World Tree going in, it is going to replace Guardian Project. This was an enchantment for three and a green mana. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, if it doesn't have the same name as another creature we control over a creature card in our graveyard, we draw a card. All right, so right off the bat, as we shift the Guardian Project a little over to the right, the Tribute to the World Tree is whenever a creature... It does not limit it to non-token creatures. Right there, win. Win, win. Regardless of what the creature is, if it's a regular creature or a token creature, we're either getting it bigger or we're drawing cards from it. Plus, at a mana value of just three versus the mana value of four for Guardian Project, yes, the, it's triple green for tribute, but... I mean, we have so many ways in which to fix our mana and this build that the triple green, I mean, we could cast that on turn two or three if we really needed to. Not a problem at all. Guardian Project is a great card. It's a powerful card, but it is not as good as Tribute to the World Tree in this build. So it is coming out and yielding it to the new enchantment named Tribute to the World Tree. What an amazing card, folks. Boy, oh boy, that's going to do a lot of work. All right, we're down to our very last edition here. Not too much to talk about. It's going to be a land going in. We've got the Zagoth Triome that's going in. It provides each of our three colors of mana. Comes into play tapped. Of course, we can cycle it, and it's fetchable. It's going to replace the Exotic Orchard, which at times could produce a black, a green, or a blue. So let's remove the limitation of it not producing any of those colors by putting Zagoth Triome in there. And as I said before, it is fetchable. So Zagoth Triome is in, Exotic Orchard is out. And there you have it, MTGBC. We have updated Yarok the Desecrated. Let me know your thoughts about these changes in the comment section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.